Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I'm, I'm, first of all, I'm humbled to be here. Um, I, it was, uh, I appreciate uh, Ray and, and Simon for the invitation. Uh, it was just uh, you know, to be considered uh, amongst uh, the group that is speaking today uh, by our student body was, was very humbling. Uh, it's something that uh, when I get the opportunity to hang out with our student body, uh, it, it's, uh, it's just an incredible opportunity, not just with our hockey players, our student athletes, but when I get to see our student body in action and work, um, to me, that, that's why I stay at RPI. I love the hockey part of it. I love getting to coach our hockey team, uh, but, it's, but it's all of you that inspire me daily, uh, that I'm humbled uh, to be in your presence, to see the things that our students do here, see how hard our students work, to see the kind of class work you do. Uh, and to see the things you go on and do post-graduation uh, is, is just incredible. So thank you very much for the opportunity. They asked me to come and speak a little bit on leadership. Uh, it's, a, it's a favorite topic of mine. It's something that we're always bantering about in, in our coaching staff. And, and it's a real, real critical uh, success factor in my business. Uh, and, and, and less about, yes, certainly about the leadership that I provide for our young men, uh, but also, probably more importantly, the leadership we can help develop within our locker room uh, on our campus and the success that our teams have in my years, uh, both at Denver and at RPI, and how, how related it is to the strength of our leadership uh, within that locker room. So raise your hand. Quick. I'm an interactive speaker. I'm not a PowerPoint guy, not, a, not a, just a speech guy. I'm an interactive person when I, when I work with uh, young Students, raise your hand if you think you're a leader. Okay, thank you. Young man right there in the blue shirt. What's your name? Evan? Okay, Evan. Why did you not raise your hand? Putting you on the spot. I think that everybody's a leader. I think everybody has a role. Do you have friends? How do they look at you? <laughs> you do. It's awesome. You got two people sitting next to you, so I feel confident with that question. Okay. So uh, you got a friend right next to you, right? Okay. Does he ever look at you in terms of how you act, how you conduct yourself? <laughs> how about classmates? Do you go to class with other students on campus? Do you with us sometimes? <laughs> do, do sometimes you go, or sometimes there's other classmates there. Sometimes you go. Do, uh, do you work on class projects? Yes, you do. You're a leader. You're absolutely. Evan, you are a leader. Uh, and I mean that with all sincerity. Everybody has a role in leadership. And I think that's where we have this big misconception in society that the leader is this person that's, that's up on a pedestal and they're the only leader. And Dr. Jackson and our vice presidents and stuff, and that's the only leader we can have on campus. And, that, and that's just plain old wrong. We all have such a huge responsibility to be leaders. If you're a sibling, you're a leader. If you're a fraternity or sorority brother or sister, you're a leader. If you're going to class with other students, you're a leader. You have an opportunity every day with your actions, more than your words, with your actions, more than your words, to make an impact on the people around you on the people around you. Leadership defined, okay? Leadership defined. Who's, has, uh, who wants to throw out a definition of what they think a leader is? Anybody? Don't be shy. Come on. Yes? Someone, Someone that influences others. That's awesome. Absolutely. Okay, any other definitions? No shy. Yes? fully utilizing their team's strengths and probably trying to hide or minimize their weaknesses. Awesome. Yes? Endurance. I love that. That is awesome. Endurance. Yes? Tries to bring out the best in people. Without question. That is huge. Not to bring out the best in you. Right? To bring out the best in people. I, I think that, that those are all great definitions. And I think a real key thing in leadership, everybody reads about leadership, we talk about leadership, everybody talks about roles in leadership and how you go about it. 
And the one thing that sometimes gets forgotten, because leaders sometimes like to talk and, and to pontificate a little bit, is people. Without your influence of people, without swaying the mass, without utilizing their strengths, without bringing out the best in the people around you, you're nothing. You're nothing. And you're, you might think that you're a leader because you might have a position of leadership, but at the end of the day, it's your influence on making the people better around you. That's the real key to your leadership opportunities. Leadership is defined as person who guides or directs a group, having influence over a group and sway over a group of people. Inspiring others to action. Inspiring others to action. And you know, what do you think of, right? What do you think of when you think of leadership? Come on, what do you think of? What's that? Presidents, right? You think of the presidents, yes. What else do you think of when you think of leadership? What's that? The coach, yes, hopefully, right? Um, but you know, I, I think you, uh, naturally you think of the big speech, right? The big speech before the game or the big speech by the president at the State of the Union to arouse action. But again, I think that's a misconception because I believe, I'm not a big believer in the big speech before the game. I think if I have to go give in a big speech before the game, I probably haven't done my job as the leader leading up to that game. I think if the president is sitting there trying to sway the masses in one big speech, then that, the job that they've done on the way up to that big speech has probably been lacking. And you're really hoping at that point, you're hoping to hit a home run and to inspire action, when in reality, it's your daily actions and your daily inspiring of others and your daily interaction with others that should be swaying the masses and getting people to want to do the things that we want them to do. I, I think that's a real important thing. Our role as leaders, everybody, as they talked about, everybody has a part in it, right? I, I don't believe, you know, there's a lot of people, Evan, I picked on you, you know, but there's a lot of people that didn't raise their hands. And I'd like to, uh, I'd like you to leave today believing you're a leader. Even if you can influence one person, if you can influence one person, you're a leader. And you're an important leader. You're an important leader because that person you're influencing is usually someone who's close to you. Who's close to you. And that's what matters most, right? What matters most is having influence over your family and helping your family and trying to inspire your greatness in, in your friends, in your fraternity, in your club, in your sports team, in your class, and the work that you're doing. That, that's the most important aspect of leadership. Isn't inspiring people that you don't know, but it's inspiring and doing great things with the people that you do know. And I think that's the one, if you take anything away from today, it'd be that you are a leader, and that is your role, and you need to take that role seriously because the actions and how you portray yourself every day is part of that. When, when I think of leaders, uh, I, I am not an unbelievably religious person, uh, but I'm enamored with Pope Francis. I, I think he's just spectacular. And when you think of the Pope, right, what, what do you naturally think of when you're thinking of the Pope? Anybody? What? The hat. The big fancy ornate hat, right? And all the jewels and the, you know, the, the, the car that's all, you know, uh, bulletproofed and, and just the ornateness of that person in that position. And here comes Pope Francis and he gets elected to, to be the Pope and, or chosen. And he, the first thing he does is he, does away with some of those ornate things. And he goes and lives, instead of living in this you know, grand palace, he goes and lives in a more common place. And instead of having people come and shower him with honors, he goes and washes the feet of prisoners and of people that are down on their luck. And, and I think that a real thing you hear today, right, is servant leadership. And I think that is, is so, so important as you are all growing and you're making your way through college and you're heading into uh, the real life and adults and workhood or, you know, and jobs and marriage and children is servant leadership. Not being the leader that stands up here and points down and tells everybody what they wanted, what they're supposed to do, but the leader that is down getting his or her hands dirty with the masses, right, 
and trying to inspire them to greatness and trying to help them, trying to help them. And the key to all that is knowing and connecting with people. It's all about people. It's all about people. Leadership is about people, you know, and, and it's about creating relationships with them. It's the, it's the great line, and I love this line. I try to remind myself of this all the time. They don't care how much you know until they know how much you care, you know, and I think that is really critical Like with your friendships. It'll be with your marriage later in life. It'll be with your children. It'll be with your job. The people that you're working with, they do not know, they don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Why is leadership important? Come on. Anybody? Leadership. Why is it important? Don't be shy. Come on, let's answer. Why is leadership important? I'm going to pick on you because I know I've, I've spoke to you before. Awesome. Brings out the best in other people so the entirety can be better instead of single people being better. Right? And so that's trying to get a group, a group here, right, to unite in a common cause and inspire them to action. Everybody has their own motivators, right? What motivates you? What do you want to do? What do you get excited about? You wake up in the morning, what do you want to get excited about? What excites you? What's your why are you here? What's your goal? Awesome. Simon, what about you? Uh, What's your goal? What motivates you? Why are you at RPI? Uh, uh, I love learning. I love, uh, I love people. I love, yeah, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. That's okay. What else? Who else? Who has a great grand goal, an end goal? They want to get this job. This is their dream. Don't be shy. Raise your hand. Evan, you got something? I'm coming back to you. Inspire great games at Dizzy Bat? I have no idea what that is, but I think that's awesome. You know, I think that's, there you go. I think that's awesome, right? What else? Anybody have a, a career goal? This is the job they want to have. Yes? Louder, please. That is awesome. Okay. So, and here's my thing, right? So you hear this, you know, here's your goal, and here's your goal, and this is your motivation. You wake up every day, and you get excited about this. And you wake up every day, and you put that ugly Harvard t-shirt on. Oh, my goodness, I just saw that. <laughs> How did we let him in here? I'm just kidding. Rensselaer, I like that one. So, but we take all of these, right? And, and we take, and this, this, is, this is a real critical element to leadership, and, and we talked about it earlier, is how do we take all of this, right, these individual goals, and I want to do this, and I want to be part of this, and this is my dream job, and I want this, and I get motivated by this, and then come together for the greater common good, for the greater common good. What's RPI's goal? We're all at RPI, right? What's Rensselaer's goal? Anybody? Dr. Knowles, do I have to call on you here? What's that? Change the world. Absolutely. What else? Class. That is part of Rensselaer's goal. Absolutely. Okay. Rensselaer has their goals, right? To be this unbelievable research university okay, that creates a vibrant student experience and student life. Okay. And, and you could go on and on about Rensselaer's goals, right? But what if, what if we all woke up every day? And yes, we have our own goals, but that was something that was first and foremost on our minds. How do we make Rensselaer great? I only have four years here, or five, or six, or whatever I end up studying. But this is the limited time I have to be part of something bigger than myself. There'll be no greater reward that you'll have in your life than to be part of something special that's bigger than just you. Maybe it's your fraternity. Maybe it's your family. And you'll be searching. Right now, you have it. You have it a lot. I'm telling you, you have it here on campus. You're part of it. There's 5,000 students every day trying to be part of it, trying to figure their own way out. you got your fraternities. you got your clubs. you got your sports teams. And then you will go on into the real world, and you will search for that. You will search for that opportunity to be part of something special. 
And, you, and I hope you all find it. I hope you find it in your career. I hope you find it in your family, in your children, if you have them. You know? But when you have that, when you're at a place or you're in a group and you're part of something that you think is special, seize it. Seize it. And do everything you can as your own role as a leader within that group to make it the best that you can be. And try to get that group to achieve the goals of the common group, the common goals. Because it'll be so powerful and it'll be something you take away with you the rest of your life. Because it's bigger than you. Because what even your great individual accomplishments, Simon, you achieved something great in your life. What's the first thing you do? Celebrate with friends. Celebrate with friends. The first thing you do when something great happens to you is what? Tell other people. people. Why? (laughs) Do you just walk around the school and randomly tell people? (laughs) Or do you tell people? Who do you tell? People you care about? People that you share things with, right? People that have influence on you. People that you have influence on. You know, and, and, and that's what it's all about, right? It is, and that's, that, I, I try to relate that to our guys. Like, it's great to have these individual goals, but the, it's amazing the first thing you do when you achieve an individual goal is you want to go tell somebody and you want to share that with somebody that's special to you. That's special to you. And when you can accomplish group goals... Whatever group you're in, as a student here at Rensselaer, fraternity, a sports team, whatever, sorority, whatever that is, when you can accomplish a group goal, when you can set aside some of your individualism and some of your individual attitudes to accomplish a group goal, the, the level of power that you'll take from that and the level of confidence that you'll gain from that as a leader and as a person will be astounding. It will be astounding. Ryan Moriarty. Ryan is here helping run this thing. He's, he's got to be back there. He doesn't get to be out here in the crowd. He's back there. He's guiding people around and stuff like this wouldn't exist without him, right? And all those people, all the small parts that are all so important and they all contribute to the greater good. The, I think leadership is, is most important at critical mass. And the answer before was, was, was great answer was endurance. Because it's all fun games, right? You get excited about a new idea, a new project, or something you're working on, and then eventually you hit a roadblock, right? And you hit adversity, and you hit tough times. And that's when most people quit. That's when most people stop, or they get de- de- uh, d- deterred, they get sidetracked, they start going in a million different directions. And I think that is where leadership, and I'm not talking about the grand leader, I'm talking about everybody. That is where endurance and staying the course if you believe in something is so, so important. And it's so important at those moments to just remember what you're there for and and to stay focused on that and to simplify and block out all the distractions. And There's there's a great little story that that I've used before. Um, Has anybody uh, heard of uh, Hernan Cortez, the, the famous explorer? Anybody? Yes? There's a few people. Right? So he goes and, and uh, he's supposed to invade Mexico, right? And he's going into and he lands his boats on the Yucatan Peninsula. And I, and I love history and I love uh, military history even more. And he lands on the Yucatan Peninsula to go invade and conquer those lands, okay? And what does he do? Anybody? That knows him? What's the order he gives? He, he, the only way there is by ship, by boat, and the only way back is by boat. What's the order he gives? Burn the boats. Real simple, real direct, real clear. He didn't get up and give this grand win one for the Gipper speech. He didn't say, we have to do this, or heads are going to roll. Burn the boats. That simple. Very clear, very direct. What was he saying by saying burn the boats? What was he telling his troops, his crew? What's that? There's no backing out now. All in. All in. Right? That, that total and complete investments that you need 
in life to be successful at something. To be successful at something. To be a successful husband, to be a successful father, to be a successful wife, mother, scientist, whatever it is. I think a lot of times we leave ourselves a lot of escape routes. Well, I'm going to try to do this, but if it doesn't work out, I'll, you know, no big deal, you know. And if you can find something that you're passionate about, that is powerful to you, that, that in, inspires you, that excites you, that gets you to have the opportunity to be part of something bigger than just yourself, I strongly suggest taking that, that all-in mentality, uh, which, which, which that full commitment allows you to have the endurance, the endurance to get through those critically hard times. What does it take to be a leader? Okay, uh, great traits. Who's got some traits of, of leaders? Yes. Understanding yourself. Understanding yourself. Great. That's a great one. Yes. Integrity. integrity. I love that. Thank you very much. Integrity. What does integrity mean? Anybody? Integrity. What does it mean to you? Oh, go ahead. Having morals and standards, yes. Being true to your word. Being true to your word. You say you're going to do something, you do it. That's a critical element of a leader. Critical element. Other ones. Yes. Passionate and supportive. Passionate for the cause, supportive of others. that You're trying to chase the cause. What else? Any other? Yes. Excuse me. Being inclusive, bringing others into the fold, trying to get them excited about their role within what we're trying to accomplish as a, gr- as a common group. Awesome. What else? Any other ones? Yes. Being accommodating. Being accommodating. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> I agree. You need to be accommodating to others to a certain extent, unless it's impacting the mission. Yes. Being adaptive. Having a clear vision of where we're going, but not being so stubborn in your ways that you're not, you're, it's okay to go like this along the path towards success. It's okay to be over here and here as long as you're still going that way eventually. As long as you're still going. Yeah. Being ambitious for the group. Am, ambitious for the group. Setting a great goal and getting people excited about that. Do you think it's more important... Do you think it's more important to have talents as a leader? Talent for whatever you're leading. You're, you're an unbelievably intelligent scientist if you're leading a research team. Uh, you played in the NHL if you're, a, if you're a hockey coach. You think it's more important to have talent or sincerity? If you had to rank it. Yes. Yes. Sincerity. Sincerity. Talent's overrated. It's important, it is, but there's, this world is filled with marginally talented people that do incredible things because they have unbelievable sincerity, they have high level of care, a high level of care, of sincere care for the people they're with. Not just like, hey, how you doing? I hope you're having a good day. Like, care. Do I know you? Do I know what makes you tick? Do I know your family? Do I know your siblings? Have I asked you about them? The things that matter to people. People that actually sincerely will listen and care about you and about others in a group are critical leaders. And they're far more important. That's far more important than talent. One of my best friends, John Cooper, is the head coach of the Tampa Bay Lightning. He did not play high school hockey. He's the head coach of the Tampa Bay Lightning. He's a finalist for the Jack Adams, which is the coach of the year in the National Hockey League. He didn't play high school hockey. He played lacrosse in college. He played lacrosse in college. He went and worked on Wall Street. He was a lawyer. And then his first hockey coaching job was to coach the Detroit Metro Junior B Jets, which was paid about $1,000. That was only like 11 years ago. And now he's one of the best coaches in the National Hockey League. I've met hundreds of people that know X's and O's better than him. I know thousands of people that are better hockey players than him. But I know nobody, I know nobody that gets and cares about people more than he does. He can hire people to help him with hockey. 
He can hire assistant coaches that played in the NHL and work with his players. But he gets a group to care about each other, to care about each other, and he cares about them. And they win and do incredible things because of it. The, when I think of, of uh, the impact leaders can have on society, you know, and what are some of the most impactful leaders uh, that you think of? A huge, impactful world leaders. Anybody? Yes. Gandhi. Great one. That's the first one that came to my mind, too. Gandhi. Other one. Nelson Mandela. Nelson Mandela. Awesome. Awesome. Another hugely impactful leader. Yes. Dalai Lama. Dalai Lama. Absolutely. Others. Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King. Great one. Huge. Huge impact on society. Others. John Paul II, Abraham Lincoln, you know. You can list off and on and on and on on these, these hugely impactful world leaders that you can do research on, you can go read stories on. Who's been the most impactful leader in your life? Louder. Parents. Who else? Grandparents. Teachers, friends, siblings, classmates, the people you're with every day. That's the critical piece. That's where we're all leaders. I, I'm thrilled with leadership. I'm fascinated by it. I read tons of stories on all these people we talked about, on Gandhi and Lincoln and Mandela and Martin Luther King, and I, I could read them for days. I could read them for days, but then I think about me. Who's been the most impactful leader in my life? It's my grandmother. My grandfather died when my grandmother was pregnant with my father. And so that left her as a um, widow with three children in, a, in the 1950s where, where women didn't work generally. And that could have right there broken our family. Right there. That could have ended it. But her endurance, her commitment to her family, her strength and resolve allowed her to find a way and fight a way to make a life for the three of them, which ended up making a life for them 12 grandkids and then 21 great-grandkids who have had pretty good levels of, of community success and, and being part of a greater good, all because of one lady didn't quit and didn't give up back in 1952 when it would have been really easy to just go in your own little world. And, and that's my point, is, is, is you read about all these great leaders, but the most important leaders to you are the ones right here, the people you're with, your family your classmates, your best friends, your parents, grandparents. And, and in turn, you are to them. You are to them. And that's our responsibility. And that's our role every day to live our life with our actions in the right way so we can help inspire greatness in others. We can be part of something bigger than ourselves. And we can have that impact on the people we interact with on a daily basis. That's why Evan and all the rest of us are leaders and should take that role very seriously. Thank you very much.